What's going on everybody? Welcome to episode 5 of the Wealth Journey series. Today we're going to do a financial breakdown from April, May, and June. We're going to get right into it right now. So just looking at my laptop over here, my total income for the month of April was $7,809. That was take home, that was YouTube, my job, and my book sales. And just so y'all know, with each month that we go over in this video right here, I want y'all to pay very close attention to the expenses section because I fell off because I decided to start acting up within these last three months. But I'm man enough to admit that. Anyway, we're gonna go straight into the expenses now. My total expenses in April came out to $6,799. And just keep in mind, the expenses that I budget for, <laughs> for every month is $5,800. And $86. So even though I spent well under what I made, I still didn't hit my budget. And we're gonna take a deeper dive and look in to see exactly why it is that this happened. So as y'all know, rent is usually gonna be one of the highest expenses that I have. Uh, for me, it's either giving or rent. That's usually what are my, what my two biggest ones are. But in this case, as you can see on the screen right here, it's rent, giving, DoorDash. Look, when I was inputting all of this data for it to display on this screen as beautifully as it is i was getting hot at the amount of times i was typing doordash 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 see my problem was i wasn't keeping about track of this properly and so it took me a couple hours to get all the data in here for all three of these months at the same time so basically i learned a lesson in making this video i need to be tracking my expenses every single week because I have a feeling ain't no way I would have let myself spend this kind of money on door at $603. Getting hot just thinking about it. Groceries was pretty low, uh, 502. And for my groceries every month, I usually budget 550. DoorDash isn't even a need, so I don't even really know why it's about up here. And of course, my gym sessions, so my Muay Thai classes, my private lessons, as, as well as my recreational gym where I go to lift weights and run and things like that. That came out to 433, so that came out came out on the low end. So it wasn't a terrible month. DoorDash is going to get even more out of control as we go on. So spoiler alert. Um, this is a very good video for me to really allude to what I talk about on this channel: lifestyle creep, overspending, and other things like that. And I'm not exempt from that. Like even though I'm making good money. I'm recognizing myself when I get out of line, when I start acting up. But anyway, we're gonna jump into saving for April. We gotta go kind of fast in this video right here, but I just wanna make sure I'm not spending too much time on every single month. So anyway, we're gonna jump straight into savings. Uh, and for me, savings is multiple things. So we're talking savings account, emergency fund, Roth IRA, stock portfolio. We're talking about savings and investing. And for this month, this is a typical month where my goal is to at least at the minimum have $1,000 saved, whether it's in an investing account or it's in a savings account. I usually always hit this goal just because I plan for it and I am very intentional about it. Anyway, $500 went into my Roth IRA, $500 went into my emergency fund, and that's that. Uh, typically, I like to shoot for $1,500 where $500 goes into saving, $500 goes into my emergency fund and the other 500 goes into my Roth IRA. Sometimes that doesn't work out just because other expenses and other obligations come up. But yeah, that was the month of April. You can see my full expense breakdown right here. And there's quite a few things that I did go over on, but nothing too crazy. Like if I had to pick one thing that I'm going to cut down on going forward is DoorDash. And this is back in April. So I wasn't tracking in April or May or June. So I just know DoorDash is gonna get out of control. Happens, I'm only human, but I'm also here to set an example and I'm not about to set a bad one. So I'm about to correct my mistakes too. Now, um, I will say this, in the month of May, I got a, a, few, a few things happen, right? So of course I got the raise that I talked about in episode three, but I also got a bonus and it was a pretty sizable bonus like, I'm just going to say it like this. My take home for the month of May was 11317 And still, that's YouTube, that's work, that's my book sales. Still a pretty sizable number. But yeah, that's the kind of income I was working with in the month of May. And then my expenses ended up being $8,593. Don't make no sense. 
I went well over what I budgeted for uh, and I budgeted this month. This month is higher, noticeably higher than every other month when it comes to what I budget for my expenses. And that's because typically I, I was using this software called Kajabi to run my website on and um, I budgeted two thousand dollars because that's how much I typically have to pay year over year to maintain running my website through that software. So really, this should have been just the same as the previous month, which I think I said was fifty eight hundred and eighty six dollars. Either way, what I spent that month was higher than both of the budgets, which is about useless on my part. And I'm about to explain to you why in a second. But I want to also share with you, I didn't actually spend two thousand dollars on Kajabi because I came to my senses, I was like, look, I need to figure some things out about my business before I run a full website and it's costing me $2,000 a year. And I just kind of had to have a very honest and candid conversation with myself. So I canceled it thinking I was still gonna have to pay for this year, but I didn't, didn't have to pay a dime. So $2,000 got pocketed in a way except I about spent it on my expenses anyway, if you consider that I was only supposed to spend 5,800, but it's all good. So we're gonna break down the expenses again. So giving, I give a lot, and when my income goes up, I give more. Not to the point of detriment, but to the point of I'm gonna take care of the people that I care about. Like I told my mom, I get a bonus, you get a bonus. That's how it works. So giving, 2754 rent was 1799 rent is pretty much the same every month it's going to fluctuate between that and 1803 and things like that it's never really phasing to me like the the expenses that i know that i'm going to have to deal with i'm cool with it. it's fine but doordash was 900 freaking dollars like if i told you hey you're going to have a bill from now on that's going to range between 6 and 900 dollars you wouldn't be thrilled about that. Like, I'm looking at that money, like, even though I was able to save money, invest money, and I spent less than what I made, I'm looking at this like, man, this was an investing opportunity. This was money I could have put in a saving or an emergency fund, but I spent it on DoorDash. And this isn't even including the stuff that I spent my bonus money on, which I 100% don't regret spending my bonus money on stuff that I enjoy. So that was stuff like boxing gloves. I got myself a treadmill for the living room, one of those walking pads. Got myself one of those dental pie things that cleans your mouth guard for you because I like investing in myself and in the sport that I'm in right now. And some other things, but that's, that's the most of it. Bottom line, I didn't spend too much on groceries and I didn't spend a ton on the gym either just because a few of my private sessions got rescheduled. So yeah, and again, here's the full expense breakdown. And before I get the savings, I just wanna talk about this real quick. I do have life insurance and people say, you don't need to have whole life, uh, life insurance, you need to have just term. Okay, look, I have both. I have term, it costs me $25 a month for a massive amount of coverage. And I have whole life and it costs me 125 a month. Again, massive amount of coverage, money that gets put away, non-taxable, it grows with the market. It's a store of value. It's a form of how I invest my money. I'm already investing my money in the stock market, in my 401k, in my Roth IRA. I'm also choosing to have life insurance. Is it for everybody? No, and I'm not recommending it for everybody, but since I'm young and since I've had my life insurance for some years now, I was even younger than I am now. I'm 28 now, I, was, I think I was 24 when I got my life insurance. It is obviously cheaper for a younger person to have life insurance for the same price and the money keeps growing. So as much as I appreciate the advice that I'm getting on here and everybody's so opinionated about which life insurance look this is just how i am doing things you don't have to do the same life insurance that i do i just want to kind of nip that in the bud real quick because just in this expense breakdown i just combine the amount that i'm paying for life insurance i know it doesn't say term or whole but just wanted to be crystal clear on that i i don't regret any of my investing decisions, especially life insurance. Life insurance is something that I'm not intending to go to me, but I also did the math. By the cash accumulation of my whole life account, if I ever needed to borrow against that, 
I know it's not going to be taxed. As for term, that's not going to me no matter what way I'm looking at it. But it's going to the people that I care about. And sure, I could put the same amount of money that I'm putting into whole life into my term account, and it can be an even more massive amount of coverage. And maybe I'll consider doing that when I have people depending on me. But right now, I don't have people depending on me. Don't have any kids. I have a pet, but she can't about use my life insurance. So anyway, saving. I did quite a bit on saving. So for my regular saving, I put $1,078 in there. Uh, for my Roth IRA, I did $500. For my emergency fund, I did $500. Right now, I'm not even touching my stock portfolio, but it has grown a bit, which I allude to in my previous episode, which was episode four. Check that out if you haven't already. But I do want to talk about something else real quick before we jump into June, because June a little less exciting than May was because May I made a lot of money and I spent a lot of money too. But I want to talk about this. I didn't really think about this until I was like typing all this up and planning for this video, but we don't really think about what we go through to make the money. So for example, I make my videos about my net worth and net worth update and you know especially the first ever one that i did it did really well on youtube a lot of people really like that kind of content from me so i'm doubling down on it because i want to one document my journey but two show you guys and girls what is possible and it's also me putting my money where my mouth is i'm all the advice i done gave on this channel in my 300 plus videos that i posted up here i'm showing you in real time what my strengths what my weaknesses are and what my shortcomings are but it's easy to look at a video like a net worth video and be like, oh, well, these are just numbers on a screen. This must have came easy. Look, none of this came easy at all. And the reason I say that is because when I got my first job right out of college, I was making some good money. We're talking sixty, seventy, eighty thousand dollars $80,000 a year. I say that loosely because I got a lot of overtime. I was supposed to get sixty, but I never did. I got seventy or $80,000 a year. Besides the point. People from back home were like, oh, oh, he done went to college, huh? Got him one of those good jobs. He got one of those cake jobs, don't he? If y'all don't know what a cake job is, basically an easy job. A job that you just show up to, type on the computer real quick, and head out after eight hours. It wasn't nothing like that. I, I, I have not worked an eight-hour shift. I've only done 12, 12, 12, 12, 12. And by 12, I mean 14. It took a lot of patience. It took a lot of time. It took a lot of grit and resilience for me to get to where I am now. And that goes for everybody. Anybody who ever shows you a net worth breakdown on YouTube, anybody who's doing well, or anybody who's, you know, who you feel like is doing better than you, don't look at them and be like, oh, well, this came easy to them. Now, I made videos about how difficult my career has been in the early stages. Now, it's starting to cruise a little bit, but you have to take advantage of when things are going good because you never know how that roller coaster, what direction that roller coaster is going to go in. And so in this case, while you're doing good, when you get bonuses consistently, when you get raises consistently, once you've gotten a promotion, it's about looking at the amount of money you can put in your saving, looking at the money that you're investing, looking at the money that you have in a buffer for your checking account. While you're on top, you have to remember that that's temporary. I'm not saying it's going to be a steep fall, but I am saying there, there may come a time where you don't get that bonus you're expecting to get. There may be a time where overtime isn't available. And so while you're on top, what are you doing right now to stay on top? As you can see, in the last few months, I've been acting up. I haven't been thinking about money in the same way because I'm honestly getting more of it than I've ever had in my life. This, this was the type of money I was praying for just a few short years ago. And so, yeah, sometimes I might get to the point where I'm like, well, I'm going to get some DoorDash because I don't feel like cooking. Or I'm going to spend $1,000 on myself just because I feel like I deserve it. Like, I'm no different than anybody else. If y'all see me sweating, it's just hot in here. It's about 100 and something degrees outside right now. Yep, I was acting up in June, too. I pretty much spent every single dollar that I made, but it's all right. Not all L's are losses. Sometimes they're lessons. And this was something, a, a, less, a, a self given lesson, pretty much. It's not always numbers on a screen. It's not always, oh, this was easy. Like, you have to think about the story behind this stuff. I just know that at the end of all of this, all my paychecks, if you combine all of them together, 
and then you look at my net worth, it's always going to be money well spent, money put in the proper place, not just I got paid, so I'm going to spend money on what I want, and oh, now I have to be careful because I don't get paid till Friday. We're not doing that over here. This channel is about building wealth, and so we're going to maximize on said wealth. Anyway, for the month of June, total income take home was $8,010. As you can see, my monthly income definitely fluctuates, and I don't have a problem with that. My work income doesn't fluctuate so much because it's I'm salary, but the income I get from YouTube and my book sales and everything, that definitely fluctuates. So yeah, the numbers are gonna be different every month. My expenses, I just couldn't get right. I spent $7,877, and I'm only supposed to spend 5,886. So if I could really tap into not spending two freaking thousand dollars over what I budgeted, I could probably tap into a lot of very good investments and a lot of peace of mind by adding on to my savings at a quicker rate than I'm expecting myself to do. Wouldn't that be something? I'm going to do that and I'm going to hold myself to that because looking at this, like even though it looks good, the numbers look good, it's positive, I'm saving, I'm investing. I just, something in my soul, something in my spirit, just it just doesn't sit well with it. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't sit well with my spirit that I got to look at this screen and I done spent almost $1,000 on DoorDash. Anyway, in this case, my rent was my biggest expense, $1,803. Uh, my giving, $1,775, very respectable. Um, groceries, $884. DoorDash, $693. Okay, DoorDash was better this month, but obviously that's the habit I gotta start breaking. My gym stuff was $354. So there's not a single bill I have, not even my rent, that I'm just like, man, this is really setting me back. But the one thing I can say that's holding me back right now is myself. And I want y'all to understand this is something that a lot of people don't get. Lifestyle creep is a real thing. And I make six figures, have been for three years now, which is crazy to think about, but it doesn't matter if you're making 50,000, 80,000, 130,000, 200,000. If you have my equivalent to a DoorDash or multiple equivalents to a DoorDash, whether that's in the form of car payments because you wanna ride around in a nice Mercedes or BMW or a Dodge Challenger, whatever the case is gonna be, you got to really look at how much are you standing in your own way? Because, yeah, there's inflation, but then there's like the inflation that you've created yourself and thrown into your life that you didn't necessarily need. And this is something, this is a conversation I'm having to have with myself as we speak, because I'm looking at these numbers. I understand how investing works and how much money I'm missing out on by not investing this money. And I say that because I've had a $2,000 investment yield me $12,000, which means I put $2,000 into the market on a particular stock and it paid me $12,000. And I'm not talking about the risky trading options or nothing like that. I'm talking about just holding it for like less than a year. I think I held it for nine months before it yielded me that kind of money. And I'm still holding it to this day. So I, I want to express a little bit of anger that I have with some of the decisions I made, but they also taught me powerful lessons that in turn help you learn lessons through me. I'd much rather you learn from me than make your own mistakes and have to suffer that way. All right, home stretch. This was a month where I just did 500 Roth IRA, 500 for my regular savings, and that was pretty much it. And I made that call because I wanted to take a break on my emergency fund real quick and put my money into my regular savings to build that up. But yes, this is simply a documentary of my personal finances and my personal wealth journey. I wrote a book almost two years ago called The Wealth Journey, and it's based on a lot of financial principles that I learned and I've tried, and some I didn't agree with, some I did agree with, and I've implemented them into my life, and I basically wrote a book, a how-to guide pretty much, of how to get your life together, how to be financially stable from a young age. And I help you avoid a lot of the mistakes that I myself have made, including the ones in this video. So I just want you to know this isn't coming from a theoretical standpoint. So 
I say that to say this series is based on the information in the book. So if you haven't read the book yet, definitely check it out if you want to. Also, if you want any of the spreadsheets that I use in my other wealth journey episodes, like my saving tracker, my net worth tracker, and things like that, <clears throat> check out the link in the description. It's reggiebryant.com slash spreadsheets. It's going to have them in there, and it's for free. I want y'all to have the tools y'all need in order to have your life financially together and stable so that you can then start to make decisions that really change the trajectory of your future and you start investing and making big money from those investments over time, not overnight, over time. And I'm just really excited for you and for your future. So yeah, pick up those. Th those are free. I do have some paid things, but we ain't here to talk about those right now. Get those for free and just use them. You got to put in the work and type in the numbers now. I recommend not waiting till the end of the month to do it because it'll take you forever to fill them out. But you have tools at your disposal that are free that I developed for myself to make my life easier. So hopefully it can make your life easier and hopefully you can set aside savings goals and you can track your net worth and you can track your overall spending and expenses. That is my hope for you. And that is the purpose of this video. It went a little long, but we did go over three months worth of information from, from now on. You're going to see that it's going one month income report, expenses, saving and things like that. And, you know, it's not super exciting. That's personal finance for you. But what it is, is it's consistent. One thing I can say about this, even no matter how many times I messed up in any of these reports, they're consistent. I'm consistently saving. I'm consistently investing. That's going to add up over time. It's not about getting a $10,000 bonus on top of my regular paychecks, which I didn't get. But if I did, I'm just saying you, you're not expecting money to fall out of the sky and you just invest it. No, it's these little bits and pieces over time. And that's what leads to the big money. Anyway, I've talked enough for today. Hopefully y'all have a good evening. Enjoy your day. Enjoy your night. Whatever time zone you're in. It's about to be night for me. You know what I'm saying? Sun's about out, but it's like six o'clock. Me recording this video. Anyway, thank you for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant. This channel is all about personal finance, personal growth, and I am here to help you achieve your financial goals in today's economy. Stay tuned for some more episodes. I got some heat coming up. Thank you for watching.